with Southern Traditions. Chris is out in the woods right now, checking on our hog traps from last night. Looks like we had some complications because things didn't quite go the way we had hoped. For more on that, I'm going to send you guys out to Chris to talk about what went wrong. Good morning, guys. It's Chris. We're uh, out here at the hog trap. Had an unfortunate event occur last night. Had a hog in the trap and uh, he was able to bust out. So I'm out here to do a little bit of repairs real quick, set it, and hopefully we'll get another one in there later tonight. So inside this trap, there's supposed to be a line that goes all the way down right there. And uh, as you can see, I've tried to reinforce it before, but it uh, obviously did not hold this time. So we're gonna do a little bit better job of reinforcing and we'll see what we can come up with. All right, guys, I got it all fixed up. My little assistant, Justin. There. So Brandon wanted me to explain a little bit how this tricky stick works. So you'll see I got a stick sitting in there over top of the corn. It goes to this string. The string goes all the way up to a pulley, and then down to the door. Justin, stay clear, okay? So what happens is, is the hogs come in and they get a rooting around here and then they bump this tricky stick. Watch your fingers. And then the door shuts. And that is how we catch a hog. Yeah. All right, guys, so that's it. We're uh, we're all fixed up, ready to get another one. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. No hog trap check would be complete without a stop at the Walmart, so here we are. Hey, good morning, guys. It's Chris and Brandon out here. We're on the property. The old tricky stick worked last night. So we're out here on the property. We're gonna harvest this thing and uh, be super thankful and blessed that we get to, to eat them. It'll help alleviate some of the hog problems that my buddy has out here. Uh, these animals are very destructive and they populate very, very quickly. So. We're gonna go take a walk up and see what we got. Oh, there he is. It's a small one. So as you can see, it's a pretty small hog, but it's actually bent the cage out. That's how strong and powerful they are. All right, stay back, bud. Right, we're gonna go ahead and take care of this hog and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. What's up you guys? We're back here at Chris's house now. We've got that hog out of the trap. And we're looking to go ahead and process the meat so that we can share with our friends, our neighbors, and other people around our- Lord Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you so much for this uh, opportunity that you provided for us, Lord, for all your provisions, for the animals. Well, it's a done deal, you guys. As you can see, this is why we put these traps out. So, so we're trying to help these landowners out by taking off some of this uh, pressure, this wildlife pressure. These animals are very destructive. They do a lot of, of damage and they, they reproduce very, very rapidly. So really the goal is to provide for our neighbors, provide for our friends, and help those that are less fortunate in the community. This cooler full of meat is gonna go a long way to do. So we hope you'll stick with us and keep watching what we're doing. We've got a lot more adventures to come. We're glad you guys were able to join us on this one. For another Southern tradition, stay tuned. Hey guys, so we just got back from Chris's house. As you can see, we got us a hog in the trap. We got it processed out. We have a whole bunch of meat now. Since Victoria wanted to cook some venison for dinner last or tonight, later tonight, I decided why not do a field to fork pork video. So as you can see right here, I've got some venison backstrap laid out for you guys. I've also got some of those uh, backstraps from that pig that we took this morning out of the woods. We're gonna season them up. I'm gonna be using uh, just a little black pepper, salt and black pepper, a little bit of onion powder. Uh, my favorite seasoning that must go in everything we do, smoked paprika. And please don't skimp on the smoked paprika, get the good stuff, because it's worth it. And then last but not least, we have garlic salt. Just a little garlic salt. So we're, so we're just gonna coat this uh, evenly in salt. I'd like for all the meat to have a little salt on it here. We're gonna do the same thing with the black pepper. Cover it lib uh, liberally, liberally, liberally. Yeah, you don't wanna be conservative. <laughs> it's the only time you don't wanna be conservative, by the way. And guess what? We're gonna do the other side as well. Oh! Nightmare. 
I'm gonna get a little onion powder on these guys now. Smoked paprika, I do not hold back on. I'm gonna go full bore with a smoked paprika. It's my favorite. Uh, last but not least, we're gonna throw in a little bit of garlic salt. All right, turn them over a little bit more. We're going to let these guys rest for a little bit until we are ready to cook. We want them at room temperature when we cook them. Uh, these guys, we're going to cook just as they are. The pork, we're going to cook bacon wrapped. Uh, pork on pork, baby. We like it like that. So, uh, we'll see you guys soon for the cook. Yes, Take care. Hey guys, it's Brandon with Southern Traditions. Field to fork pork video as we promised. How we create our side dishes, how we create a whole meal out of this uh, delicious pork that we harvested from the woods. And... We're gonna show you guys how we cook fried okra, one of our favorite side dishes. Hey, babe. What's up, babe? What you doing? I am making some okra, okra. for dinner. How do you make your okra? So first what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut our okra. So we wanna cut off the top and wanna cut off the end cut it at about half inch. This nifty little cutting board tells you inches. What? Amazing. So after we get them all sliced up, we are going to put them in an egg wash mix. Some eggs. 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 Milk right here. Um, milk. In our case, we're gonna use buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can definitely use milk and some white vinegar. So don't have to go run out to the store and make a special trip for something you probably won't use very much at all. If you wanted to, I've looked up a conversion before where if you do like a fourth of a cup of milk, you would want to do a one fourth teaspoon of white vinegar. And then you just go ahead and you put those together. You stir them up real good. And then you let it sit for about 10 minutes um, essentially, I guess the vinegar is like curdling your milk. You got buttermilk. Interesting. That's pretty So nice. you're going to soak your okra. In our egg wash mixture. And then what? And then we're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. And we're going to want to put that in our cornmeal and flour mix. So that's a cup of cornmeal and about a cup of flour. Mm. I guess one to one ratio. Yeah, sure. And... Um, and yeah. then we then toss you go it in ahead, the fryer? You toss it in that bread mixture real good. Make sure that everything's well coated. And then, yeah, you want to go ahead and toss it in the fryer. Hey, babe. What's up, babe? What you doing? Cutting okra. Oh, what? Yeah. How do you know if the okra is good or not? That's a great question. You will notice some of your okras don't quite slice through as nicely as they should. When like I say they should butter, right? When I say they should slice through nicely, I mean they should slice through like you're cutting through warm room temperature butter with a very very sharp knife. If they don't cut like that, they are no good. They should be thrown out. So, what you're looking for is a very fluid motion. When I say cuts like butter, it should just literally slice right through. It should be effortless, the cut. But if you get one that doesn't quite want to cut, I'm having to put forth a lot of effort there to cut through that. What you're gonna end up with is a very fibrous, as you can see, a very fibrous piece of okra that's not gonna taste very good and it's it's not gonna be very enjoyable to eat. I don't know what this one is actually. Like the, I know this one's pork tenderloin, but I don't know what the heck this one is. Um, and then yeah, yes. I don't know what that one is, but I do that know what these probably... other two is. Randy Joe. Yeah. When did you guys get home? We got home like five minutes ago. We just came to see what you were cooking. Yeah, yeah. what are you cooking? <laughs> I'm cooking. Well, I've got some venison back straps going right here pork back straps that me and mr chris took out of the woods this morning you guys wow, that's, cool. <laughs> that's cool isn't that awesome yeah. hey babe what's up babe what you doing well i'm frying some okra 
How do we know when it, it's a good time to start the fry process? Oh, that's a great question. So, as you can see, we've soaked our okra in our egg wash. We've then coated it in our flour and cornmeal mix. What I generally do is I take a single piece of okra and I drop it in. It's not flash frying, it's not spattering and splattering all over the place. And you know your oil is not too hot. Your oil also shouldn't be smoking. If your oil's smoking, you've got your, your oil's too hot. So once we know we've got our oil where we want it, we can drop in some more of our okra. Oh man, look at how beautiful that okra came out. Yeah, babe, look. And because I'm such an amazing cook, I completely forgot that the hot dogs were on the grill. And oh, look at how out. amazing they turned out. Charred to a crisp. Yeah. Sure. Um, this is our venison. As you can see, what you want is a nice pink, tender, juicy flavor. This is actually probably a little overdone, if I'm being honest. Right. Venison doesn't need to cook long. That preserves the, the tenderness. You get that nice, tender flavor. You get, mm, smells good, tastes good. So, we're gonna go ahead and cut up our pork. So, I went ahead and bacon wrapped this pork. Mm, bacon's excellent. Generally what I do when I bacon wrap my fillets or my tenderloins or my back straps, I quarter turn each one of these things about every five minutes or so on the edge of the heat. So not direct heat, we want an indirect heat. Every five minutes, quarter turns until the bacon is crispy and done. Once you know the bacon's done, the meat should be done as well. Here's a nice piece of bacon wrapped pork back strap. We're gonna go ahead and take a little taste, see how it tastes, and uh... Mm. So much thing, Ben, come on in here. Take a bite. It's very good. Very good, it's very, good. very juicy, it's very, very flavorful. Excellent. From the woods, from God's kitchen, to our mm. table. Even better with Oprah. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Mmm, look at that plate.